come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. They'll be here directly to take a sail on that yacht. I know. That's why I'm getting my critters used to riding on the water. <laughs> I don't recollect them being invited. <laughs> well, I don't care nothing about going naked. Now, Ellie, you're the main reason I'm thinking of buying this yacht. What you mean? Well, according to Mr. Drysdale, there is a bunch of high-quality young fellas sails around on them boats. Oh, are you aiming to get me married off? Well, I wouldn't put it as blunt as that, but if the right fella come along, I ain't aiming to sick the dogs on him. Well, Jethro says I'm too old to get a man. Well, uh, Jethro knows a heap of book learning, but when it comes to courting and romance, he's about as bright as a smokehouse at midnight. Who's that, Uncle Jet? Nobody. You get yourself into a nice, pretty dress. Yes, sir, Pop. I see you're all ready to go. Well, yes, sir. How about Granny? Well, she's changed her mind. She says she ain't going out on no ocean or no yacht. I just had her talked into it. I know you did. And whilst I was helping her pack vittles just now, throwed in a few clinchers myself. Like what? Marcus says, nothing to be scared of, Granny. Even if you fall overboard, I'll save you. I says, heck fire. I can swim faster than any old shark. How you going, boy? Thank you. Then I says, even if the shark gets to you first, he's going to think twice before he goes to gnawing on a tough little old bony piece of meat like you. <laughs> But that made her feel good. You thought so, wouldn't you? But it was just about then that she said she wasn't going. Well, I go talk. Hey, you want me to help? No, no, you've done enough. Oh, Uncle Jim, here's something that might cheer her up. Tell her that even if the shark does get her, it's quicker than drowning. <laughs> I remember that. Oh, and we all got to go sometime. <laughs> You ain't going out on that boat, are you? Sure am, Granny. Well, what will you do if you fall off in the ocean? Well, I can swim. Ain't you ever heard of sharks? Of course I have. Well, what will you do if you meet up with one of them? Nothing I can do. Pa says I can't bring home no more critters. <laughs> Foolishness. Foolishness, that's what it is. The whole family's gonna get it up. Them sharks is gonna be having clampy chowder. Granny, what's this I hear about you not coming with us? Jed, hill folks don't belong on no ocean. Granny, you done let Jethro scare you. Mr. Drysdale said being on one of them big yachts is just like being in your own house. And I've saved myself a trip. <laughs> I'm done here. Mr. Drysdale said there's a lot of fun on them big yachts. You can fish off them. Fall off them, too. And I ain't aiming to be no snack for no shark. Jethro has got you worried about nothing. I ain't so sure. I've been eating fish for 70 years, and they could be carrying a mighty strong grudge. Well, I'm ashamed. Jed, I was born on dry land. I was raised on dry land. And when my time comes, I aim to go on dry land. But that's just it. You know the good Lord is looking out for you. He'll decide when it's your time to go. When I go, it's up to him. Where I go, is up to me. <laughs> Hi, Miss Jane, Mr. Drysdale. Come on in. Thank you, Jethro. Good to be aboard. <laughs> Everyone ready, Jethro? Uh, no, ma'am. Ellie's still getting dressed. Oh, I'll go up and see if I can be of some help. <laughs> hey, Mr. Drysdale, are you in the Navy? No, no, lad. These are merely yachting togs. Though I 
I do have the look of a seahawk about me. <laughs> Admiral Drysdale, born to command. <laughs> Go gray in this sleeve, and I'd look every inch the skipper. <laughs> I thought I heard company. Howdy there. Hey, Uncle Jed, is Mr. Drysdale going to be the skipper of your yacht? Well, now... No, no, of course not. Here's our skipper. <laughs> Standing by for order, sir. Hey, Mr. Drysdale, can Uncle Jed wear a fancy uniform like yours? My boy, your Uncle Jed can wear the fanciest uniform money can buy. A dog! Hey, Granny! <laughs> Granny, you gotta change your mind about going to the ocean. I ain't changing nothing but my clothes. Oh, come on, Granny, please. I ain't setting foot out of this house. Hey, you don't have to. I'll tote you. Hey, go. Put your Granny down. I can't. She's locked on to something. Granny, they go. I ain't letting go until they push me down. I can't put her down until she lets go. I ain't there. Two again, one. Now put her down. She'll get away. Leave go. See, now I gotta catch her again. So scarce, boy. Go take a drive. Where to? Anywhere. Hey, can I get your uniform for you? Yeah, yeah, you do. Hey, the fancy one? Sure, sure. Now get. It. Now listen to reason, Granny. There's nothing to be frightened of. Come on, Granny. Don't be afraid of cat. You can coax, plead, and shame mouth me all you want. I ain't a bunch of Why do you have to be so all-fired stubborn? Well, for one thing, I, I can't get my head out of here. <laughs> See you later, Granny. Wait, don't make me <laughs> Sure you don't intend to leave her like that. Of course not, but that stair railing might be just a holder we need to lead that little mule to water. We're supposed to meet the yacht people at the harbor at 11. Well, you and Miss Jean go on ahead. Granny ain't likely to back down in front of company no how. Well, how will you get to the yacht harbor? The trip. Oh, no! Oh. Well, I mean, it would be much better if you arrived in my limousine. How come? Well, because it's, it's bad luck for the skipper of a yacht to arrive in a truck. Right? Oh, well, right. It's, uh, it's an old superstition of the sea. Yeah, and you wouldn't want to jinx the ship. Of course not. Fine. Well, my limousine will be standing by. We'll see you at the pier. Number 21. We'll be there quick as Granny gives in. Uncle Jed, wait till you see the uniform I got for you. You're going to make Mr. Drysdale look like a plucked chicken. How? Oh, Granny's got a head caught in the stair rail. Yeah, I know. She says if we'll get her loose, she'll go down the boat with us. It worked. Come on, you. Hey, Granny, how'd you get your head in there? Never mind that. Let's just get it out. I think it'll go through if I put my shoulder against it and shove. No, no, boy. Maybe it'll help if I butt her head. Never mind, Ellie. How about I turn her sideways and try yanking the rest of her through this way? I think the best plan would be to spread these bars of my... All of them? No, just these two. Oh. That's a ticket. Fine and dandy. Here, Uncle Jet, put on your uniform. I believe I'll pass that. Oh, uh, please, Uncle Jet. Yeah, come on, Paul. Well, all right. While I'm doing it, you call up to Drysdale, tell the chauffeur we're ready for the limousine. Yeah. According to Mr. Drysdale, showing up in one of them is good luck. Let's do it. He's going to need all the luck we can get. Hey, can I drive it? Well, I reckon I'd save him a heap of trouble. I'll go fetch it. And uh, leave the truck over to their house. Mr. Drysdale might want to drive into Beverly Hills. <laughs> Outfit, Jethro. Over to the movie studio. What you call the wardrobe department? <laughs> kind of fancy for fishing and a like, in it? <laughs> I reckon so. It's the only one they had in your size. <laughs> Come on, Granny. I'm coming. What's this for? One of them sharks swallows me. He's gonna get himself a double-barrel bellyache. Granny, I do. 
done told you. Ain't no shark gonna go to gnawing on a tough little old bony piece of... Well, let's hop in, everybody. Yes, sir. Oh, can find that harbor? Yes, sir. All we got to do is take off out that harbor freeway till we see some boats. Ah, that sounds reasonable to me. Now, when we get there, we'll be looking for number 21. Yes, sir. Bunch of boats? Reckon it's one of them? Heck no. They's too little. According to Mr. Drysdale, them yachts as big as houses. They better be, or you ain't getting me on one. <laughs> the any big ones over on that side. Now, them is what you call yachts. <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled for number 21, everybody. <laughs> Here she is, Uncle Jet, number 21. Looks like a dandy big yacht, Granny. Yeah, but if you ask me, it ain't strictly brand new. Maybe not, but they got a lot of hired hands cleaning it up for us. Nice looking fellas, too. It ain't easy to get into this yacht harbor. Yeah. For a minute, I thought that feller at the front gate wasn't going to let us in. Well, he sure changed the tune when they seen Paul. I'll say he did. Fell all over yourself being polite then. It's loaded and everything. Well, you got to remember, they's hoping I'll buy this boat. Folks is generally extra polite when they're trying to sell you something. <laughs> Where's Mr. Drysdale and Miss Jane? Why don't you youngins take a look around for him? Yes, sir, Pop. Jed, why do you suppose Mr. Drysdale is so all fired head up on you buying that boat? Well, for one thing, he thinks it's a chance for Ellie Mae to meet some young fellas of high quality. Don't look now, but I think it's working already. What you mean? There's a couple of boys looking down at us. They must have spied Ellie because her eyes are bugging out like a bullfrog. <laughs> is that an admiral? That's an admiral. Let's get the OD. <laughs> you know, Cliff, it's quite a feeling of responsibility. What's that? Being the senior officer aboard this ship. Say, that's right. With this skipper and exec both ashore, you're in command. Worried? Not a bit. The ability to command is something you're born with. Either you've got it or you haven't. Let's face it, Cliff. Sir. Hey, pardon, sir. Just a moment. Let's face it, Cliff. I've got it. <laughs> All right, men, what is it? There's an admiral about to come aboard, sir. Very well. You may return. An admiral? Are you sure? Well, sir, he's got a whole sleeve full of gold braid. Yes, sir. He's got like that, and then like that, and then like that again. Isn't that an admiral? That's an admiral. <laughs> oh, boy, is that an admiral. We can't find hiding the hire, Mr. Drysdale. Maybe he's already on the boat. When I go up and have a look, y'all wait here in case he shows up. <laughs> Tell communications to locate the skipper. Alert the crew. Find someone to pipe the admiral aboard. Get six men for side boys. Get everything shaped up for inspection. <laughs> Never mind that. Move. Welcome aboard, sir. <laughs> this is a, a great surprise. Honor. Uh, relax, boys. Uh, Mr. Drysdale here? Is he supposed to be, sir? Yes, he is. Then he's here, sir. <laughs> good, good. Come on up, everybody. Come on, Granny. <laughs> I've changed my mind. I'm going to wait in the car. Hey, get through! Get through! <laughs> get I uh, hope your family enjoyed the tour of the ship, sir. Uh, the lieutenant will be with you in a moment. Uh, he's trying to contact the skipper. Oh, Uncle Jed's the skipper. <laughs> uh, of course. I met Commander Blake. <laughs> Fine and dandy. Fine and dandy. Jed Clampett. If you buy this boat, you are plumb off your rocker. I like this boat, Paul. Yeah, Uncle Jed, it's a dandy. What do you young'uns know about boats? We know as much about them as you do. Then you don't know nothing, so I... <laughs> There's a bunch of nice-looking fellas on it. Yeah, I kind of noticed that myself. So did I. And I ain't cooking for 250 hired hands. <laughs> Hope you buy it, Uncle Jed. Sure would like to drive this rascal. You know how, do you, boy? Oh, it looks easier than the truck. They ain't even got no pedals. Please, Pa. I think we ought to see how it rides first. Hot dog! Let's go! 
We hope to establish communication with Commander Blake very shortly, sir. However, still no trace of Mr. Drysdale. Well, don't worry about it. Meanwhile, sir, we're serving coffee and refreshments in the wardroom, uh, with the Admiral's permission. Well, that's fine. Thank him for it. Lead me to it. Right this way, madam. Ain't we going for a ride, Pa? Well, that's up to this young fella right here. Can we please go for a ride? A ride? Yeah, Uncle Jed wants to see what this thing will do. The ship, sir? That's right. You mean you want to put out to sea, sir? Yep. Now, sir? Sooner the better. Don't you want to wait for the skipper? Hey, you're talking to the skipper. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Beg pardon, sir. Your orders will be carried out immediately. Thank you. Now let's go have some of that coffee. <laughs> Be nice to raise these doorways tonight. Iron kind of dents a fellow's head. Ain't doing that iron no good, neither. <laughs> Chief, it's aimless to keep driving around like this. We've covered the entire harbor area. From the land, but not from the sea. Well, I don't follow you. Well, maybe the clampers got to the wrong pier and aboard the wrong yacht. All the really big ones are anchored out in the channel. I suppose that is a possibility. Uh, pull over there, where it says speedboat to hire. Can I help you folks? Yes, you can. We need a good fast boat and an experienced operator to take us around the various yachts in the channel. Well, have your man. Good, good. How much? $35 an hour. $35 an hour? Chief, you've got to get out there somehow. I know, I know. Hey, what's going on? What is this way? Don't this thing go any faster. Well, not with one person rowing. You know, your trouble is you're not smooth. You need a little rhythm and coordination. I also need a little help. Oh, very well. Oh, thank you. Now, one and the whole, one and the whole, and the whole. Miss Hathaway, you're not with me. Oh, I wish that were true. Now, one and the whole. Can I drive now? Oh, well, it's all right with me, but you'd best ask the fella at the steering wheel there. <laughs> Thank you. Uncle Jed says I can drive for a spell if it's all right with you. <laughs> Hold steady on one zero zero. Okay. Hey, Uncle Jed, we's doing a hundred. <laughs> kind of fast. It'd have to do any turning, ain't it? Well, there's one way to find out. <laughs> That was a very hazardous maneuver. Thank you. Can I drive some more now? Uh, well, let's let the helmsman take the wheel for a while, huh? Okay. I'll work these levers. Oh, uh, uh... <laughs> Hey, uh, sir, may I suggest that your family might enjoy being out on deck? Anything going on out there? Uh, well, I could arrange something, sir. Like what? Well, uh, how about a demonstration of our armament system? Firepower capabilities, defense and attack procedures. Sounds all right. Lead the way. <laughs> well, Miss Hathaway, you're certainly making a mess of this. We haven't gotten to one yacht. The current's too strong, Chief. Why do you row for a while? Miss Hathaway, who owns the bank where you work? You do? Who pays your salary? Who signs your checks? You do? Then who rows? I do. Then get to it. <laughs> One, two, <laughs> hey, Uncle Jed, you just gotta buy this boat. Why, you and me could do some tall hunting and fishing on this rascal. Look at them explosions, throw that water in the air. like a very sporting way to fish. I reckon when you got all these men to feed, you can't fool around with no worm on a bent pin. What are they shooting at? 
I fly in birds, I reckon. I wouldn't want to have to cook them when they get done with them. Satisfactory, sir. Well, I reckon you've done your best. Well, yes, sir. We all did, sir. Well, then, it's up to me to make a decision, ain't it? Yes, sir. Just a minute. You got them figures wrote down, boy? Yes, sir, Uncle Jet. That there boat costs $6,000 a day to operate. She uses up 500 gallons of oil every hour. And them 250 hired hands eats better than 600 pounds of food a day. And she costs three million dollars. You gonna buy it? I reckon not. What? Turn the car around. But... Young fella, I made up my mind about your ship. You have, sir? Yep. I'm gonna pass it. <laughs> he passed us! He passed us! <laughs> He's pretty happy for a fellow that just lost a sale. <laughs> Now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.